Hello everyone, Stan from StanGB Rebuild here and today I'm gonna talk about a kit that I recently received from a fairly unknown company called Maxtech. Um This product is a kit for the WE SCAR LNH GBBR. Um, it's called the Maxtech Scarab, uh, standing for SCAR Accurate Barrel. What is this kit? Um, this kit is simply set a free flow barrel for the WE SCAR LNH. So, about the Maxtech company. Uh, the Maxtech company is a Taiwanese based manufacturer that makes mostly paintball parts and some airsoft parts. Um, this is their newest uh, part in their airsoft uh, lineup. And it's fairly unknown. I've seen this thing pass in two Facebook groups and in one post on the airsoft subreddit. Um, I'm quite interested in, in this thing uh, due to the fact that it's uh, said to be real steel rail compatible. So we're talking about the Midwest industry rails, etc. Um, I have one, a Midwest industry rail on my scar, and I'm not that happy with, with how it fits onto the gun itself. So with this, I want to solve that problem on the gun, and I want to see how it turns out. So. Let's take a look. So, uh, today is a new day and I discovered that I lost all the footage of me taking the original outer barrel out of my gun. Um, so, uh, we're gonna go directly to the comparison of the two outer barrels and uh, yeah, let's start. First off, I'm gonna start with the weight. Um, the original barrel assembly weighs 408 grams. Um, yeah, that's quite a lot. Let's start with that. Um, the kit, uh, however, uh, it's fully made of aluminium, weighs 205 grams. That's half the weight of the original barrel. Um, this will be a good way to save some weight on your gun. So the first small part that I want to go over are those side panels. Um, this is the original OEM one. Um, it's fully made out of plastic. I'm sorry for the lighting. Uh, it has integrated screws that are spring loaded. So you can see short threads, not that big. Uh, in comparison, the kit delivers bigger side panels. That's the first thing. And the screws that are used are just um, bolts, but pretty big and yeah, in comparison to the original ones, way better. Um, next up, we have uh, the Tronion, so to speak. Uh, the original OEM one is cast aluminium, uh, zinc, probably a zinc alloy. Um, we have no threads on the insides, it's completely clean. Um, we have a rounded stop uh, piece with something I don't know what it's used for we have a single grub screw on top and we have normally a bigger screw post here but I had to shave mine down to install the Midwest Industries extension rail uh, on the sides we have the two holes to fix it into the body and yeah that's it uh, on the inside you can see it's completely clean if we take in comparison the CNC aluminium uh, trunnion from the Maxtech kit, we've got a top flat face, we ha have one grub screw on the top, we have next to those two holes uh, a grub screw on this side and on this side. Um, those are used to index onto the hop up unit into these slots. The original one has you can see two slots to guide this in. Uh, the Max Tech uh, doesn't have this, but they use those grub screws to secure your hub unit a little bit better. Um, another thing, we have something quite special. Um, the barrel is threaded, um, as you can see. The inside of the trunnion is also threaded. Uh, one of the things that could happen if you have continuous threads on this is that the barrel could walk out over time due to the recoil. Well, um, they 
simply solve this by adding a flat face on this side and normally where the screw hole is for um, to attach the rail the screw hole, hole itself is a bolt with the screw hole in it so you have this piece you can take out it has a flat bottom and it will index inside the trunnion with this face so if you screw it in you lock it in place like this um, this will cause it to not walk out while shooting and it's it works <laughs> it works very well uh, from what I've seen um, the other thing to even secure it more in place is a lock nut like uh, we see on uh, enforce on the buffer tubes so this one goes on then the train goes on and then we screw everything together and we lock it with this lock nut um, also on the other side of the barrel we have also a flat side for uh, your flash hiders if you have a flash hider that locks with a grub screw in place um, this is very good if you don't want to ruin your threads Uh, if we take a look at normal outer barrel, we have just a blank face, uh, we have just a continuous thread on one side, and even on mine, uh, you can't see it with this camera, but, oh, maybe, if you can see closely on that side, the hole is slightly misaligned, I had some problems with my barrel, if you can see those tiny marks up here, I had to force it slightly into the barrel due to the misalignment of the nozzle threads somehow with the original barrel itself but with this one this is just one continuous hole so no problems there um, the last part we have well, this block holding up uh, the front of the rail um, you have the original OEM has a continuous hole and a block uh, this block indexes on the front and this is uh, the second point that holds the barrel in place but due to the fact that uh, the max stacked kit is a free float rail this isn't needed so you don't have an index point on this piece compared to the original one uh, those are mostly the difference between the two so um, let's start installing them so um, the first part is quite simple we take the trunnion we take the barrel but before we take the barrel before I forget it we have to um, screw on the lock nut this is quite simple just screw it in just like real one some real ones some guns have this uh, kind of system some don't it depends on what you're working with then you can screw in screw it into the trunnion um, you screw this in until it reaches the ends of the threads uh, you go not you don't go further than the threads that are inside the trunnion um, there's a physical block on those threads so don't force it so when you've screwed it in um, when you come to the end you will see oh I'm not to the end and I'm fully in. So when you come to the end, you will see that your uh, flat face has to be pointed down. So just align them with the hole. Insert your uh, ah, screw. In fact, <laughs> this is a screw and screw hole at the same time. You just wiggle a bit. You hand tighten it a bit. You take your screwdriver and then every so often you tighten it a bit. You see that the barrel is fairly good lines. Tighten it a bit more. And at that point you should be able to just lock the front with the lock nut. You don't have to really over tighten it. It's quite a good fit so at this point you have barrel that's assembled onto your gun 
uh, from this point out we can install the outer uh, the inner barrel so in my build I'm using an old style hop-up unit um, the newer ones don't have these uh, posts anymore and they are just round pieces and uh, for the barrel I'm using a Rotec uh, 601 tight bore uh, 370 millimeters long and I'm using on the inside a maple leaf the septicon uh, 75 degree bucking um, when you've installed the uh, dial you can just take the barrel you guide it in it goes very easy you align everything you see that it's seated pretty well I deep enough like it's supposed to be bit of wiggle around and from this point we can screw in the three grub screws that are on this trunnion so from this point we shouldn't be able to get the barrel out so we can see we can adjust the hop up just fine now we have the barrel assembly um, now we would uh, install a gas block if you want to uh, if you don't want to no, that's up to you so after that uh, pin has been tapped in we're almost complete uh, now we're ready to install this onto our upper receiver um, in my case I still have to insert uh, the outer barrel the, the extension um, this is a Ratec uh, barrel extension including a tiny extension just to bridge the gap for my suppressor to be attached to my barrel uh, I only use this barrel from time to time I the suppressor from time to time it's not that big of a deal so, so the receiver is uh, it's quite simple we have these parts the, those two have two indexing holes that are that line up with two, those two so just line them up push them in slightly um, just wiggle a bit and they will pop in that's one side and the other one just push them in when they're in they're in and then we will screw in those two screws in the middle hole to fit so I was kind of wrong about the screws that were <laughs> delivered with this kit I'm talking about those ones that would go into this hole um, those ones are used to attach the bottom rail and uh, the original bottom rail to the new attachment points on the receiver so um, the ones the bolts that you have to use are the original ones that held up the original plastic pieces so just put in the screw get the right bit and just screw them in uh, so in this part of the video I wanted to show how you properly install uh, the outer barrel with the rail extension at the same time into the receiver but I found a problem um, inside the receiver these blocks ride in a channel this channel has to be clear but it turns out that the locking nut depending on how you tighten it will just interfere with these areas where I point my finger I focus with these areas on the bottom uh, the problem is in mine I'm I cannot get the barrel far enough I'm I'm close by a millimeter so instead of uh, shaving on uh, the barrel I'm just gonna grind that tiny piece off on the inside with a file so uh, I'm back in a second so 
after making those cuts in there and on the other side I can now properly install the rail I've already tested it but I'm now gonna show you how you install both the rail extension and the barrel itself onto the gun so the first thing to do is to install the I'm the bracket piece in, in the front just insert the screws don't tighten it down that's all next up we've already prepared the barrel um, we installed the gas block and also the selector um, this is cosmetic but don't forget it otherwise with the rail extension will you will not get this piece in without taking everything apart so from here on out we just insert barrel gas block and then we line up this point with the hole on the bottom uh, it ju would, uh, will just fit in just right uh, the barrel will flop around that's normal so don't put the screw in because that will give problems i've already discovered so at this point we just align the barrel we open up the receiver just a tiny bit that it can slide in at this point we just realign uh, the rail extension again and then we just slide it in like we would do with the real one so we set this up align everything and we slide it on at some point those two will, will interface and you just pull on the rail extension you will not pull on the barrel pull on the rail extension this will pull the block into place just where it would be so now if we've uh, lined up the holes like they should so at this stage we can now tighten down everything um, up here we first tighten those two tiny screws that, that there were originally so we lock in the block in front and then we lock in bolts on both sides of the body so uh, let's commence that so at this point we installed all the screws holding the barrel in place as you see the barrel is secure this will not move it will not move again this is just like it should be this is already way better than the original barrel just because how this barrel fits in so next up we are gonna lock these screws in place so we're again gonna take our screwdriver and now at last we're gonna insert the one the tiny screw that you get and you will put it in here first thing that I'm gonna say don't screw too hard this is the screw is kind of offset it will work but don't over tighten it it will other, otherwise break those threads so just screw it in slowly and the moment you feel too much pressure just stop so like this uh, now we've done that we're gonna take again our inbus keys and we're just gonna tighten down those four and in my case I also have to realign the top rail so and that's done so at this stage we're practically done this barrel is now a max tech kit free float barrel um, Compared to the other one, this one is aligned. Yeah, this one is aligned perfectly. So, with the other one, due to the fact that it had a, a two point attachment system that did go through this piece and on the back, I had alignment issues. Uh, my barrel would index slightly off to these sides, and with slightly, I mean up to six millimeters and it was enough to throw off my aim quite badly um, 
it was a hurdle to even get the original barrel to install properly and with this kit um, I'm gonna say that I'm very very happy with how it turned out so I'm gonna tighten it uh, with this one barrel is solid it will not move not to the sides it feels lighter um, it's weird to say but the balance has shifted a bit to the back now. Um, yeah. So, in retrospect, uh, would I recommend this kit? Yes. Uh, I, if you're up to uh, a build where you have to install the Midwest Industry Rail, or you just want a high-end scar build, just get a max stack barrel. Um, it a makes it more realistic, B it's just way better uh, build quality compared to the OEM barrel system. Um, if you got uh, 100 bucks that's included shipping uh, spare, just buy it. Um, it's a small company with innovative products and I like to promote those products. So um, with this said, um, I'm Stan from Stan GBB and uh, I'm out. Bye.